Okay, so I did a video on WebOS 2.9 yesterday and had several comments about Consta Kang's new Android 11 TV, uh, which has just been released. And uh, so Paminos Tech and also the Tech Tutorialist were the first two uh, to let me know, but there's several more comments. And so thanks to everybody for letting me know uh, that it was available. So uh, to find it, uh, if we do a search for Consta Kang, and I'll put a link in the description to Consta Kang's uh, blog page, well, it usually comes up with Raspberry Pi 4, so I'm going to click on Consta Kang, and then we're going to click on Devices and Raspberry Pi 4. And you can see here there's various different images. I've already covered 18.1, which is more like a tablet or a desktop interface for Android, but this is definitely geared towards using it on a TV. So controlling it more with a controller than a mouse and keyboard, although you can still control it with mouse and keyboard. So click on that and this will tell you about it but there'll also be a download link here so let's click on the download link and the one thing this doesn't come with is google play uh, so i'm just going to download the main bit first but then i'm going to add in google play so you can be so you can install apps from the google play store so oh weird the primary mirror yesterday was germany i'll, I'll use the uk one so now that's downloading i can skip back so let's scroll down this page because you need G apps uh, to be able to install the Google Play Store. And it also gives you various other apps because uh, if you don't install it, it's a very bare operating system. But, it's, but the good thing is that it's been made much more simple now. So it's still difficult to find G apps packages for Android 11. Open G apps has uh, test builds available. So we need to look for the one that says TV stock in it. So I want the latest version, so 30th of January, you can see there's one there. And if we have a look through, we want the one that says TV stock on it. So that's this one here, TV stock with test on the end. Let's click on that. And you can see that's downloading down the bottom here. So we need to transfer G apps to this USB stick. So pop your USB stick in. So if I minimize this, go to the folder, scroll down and click on downloads, you'll see that we've got gapps 11 stock and you just need to copy that over to your USB stick. And I've already copied it over and you can see there open gapps arm TV stock. So this is Raspberry Pi OS 32 bit running this operating system, but I want to put Android 11 on a micro SD card. So I've got my micro SD card. I've got an SD card reader, so pop that in and pop it into the USB socket on the Pi. Not a lot of room because I've already got a USB stick in there. And now we need to launch Raspberry Pi Imager. If you haven't got Raspberry Pi Imager, it's worth downloading. I've got other videos on how to do that. So click on Imager, choose OS, scroll all the way down to custom. And uh, if you go to the Pi folder and downloads, it might already come up on the downloads folder. Depends where you last were. So Lineage OS, which is this one, the TV version, hit open, choose your SD card. So in my case, it's this 32 gig one and hit right and yes. And if it asks you for a password, if you haven't changed it, it will still be Raspberry. Okay, so that's finished writing to the SD card. So let's hit continue, close that down and uh, carefully take out this micro SD card. It's not that easy with these USB sockets being so close together. So now I can close down this system and replace the SD card with the new Android one that I've just written. Let's take out the Raspberry Pi OS SD card and pop in the new Android 11 TV one. And we'll turn it off and turn it on again. And that's now booting Lineage OS. So you can see it's looking pretty bare at the moment. Uh, so what we need to do is uh, add the apps that we need to the desktop. Uh, so we'll add files and also we'll add settings because we're gonna need both of those. So first of all, click on settings, click on device preferences, go to about, scroll all the way down to build and just keep clicking on it until it tells you it's done. There you go, you have enabled development settings. Now I use my Xbox 360 controller for the next bit. If you press the B button, that will take you back. So if we go down 
There's probably another way of doing this, but I've got an Xbox controller plugged in, so that's one I use. Go to Developer Options and Advanced Reboot. So now we can press B to go back and back and back. So if we go to Files, we need to select the USB drive, uh, and I'm going to use the mouse and keyboard for this bit. So if I click on USB drive, we've got Open G Apps. Now I know the one that's for TV is the 195 megabyte one. So this is for the other version of Android 11. I did try and use this before; it doesn't work. You need the specific one for Android TV. So if we drag that over to where it says Raspberry Pi 4. And you can see it's put it here. That's in the root of Android, so it's very easy to get for this next step. So now what we need to do is shut down. Now on my Xbox controller, if I press the central button, that takes me home. I can go up to the top line, and you can see it says settings there. Go down to device preferences. Go all the way down to the bottom. And reboot. And select recovery. So now we need to swipe to allow modifications. Click install. Click on the Open G apps that we downloaded earlier on. And swipe to confirm flash. So everything's done now, so we need to do wipe Dalvik, swipe to wipe, and then reboot system. So you can see on the startup bit that it's asking you for your controller to press the home and the back button. So mine, uh, that's my home button and that's my back button on this controller. And now it's going to take us through all the uh, language settings and things like that. There is an English United Kingdom one there. And you can sign in with your Google account. So I've signed into my Google account and uh, you can see the polish on this OS is really nice and Consta Kang and the others have done a really good job in bringing it to the Pi and personalising it and everything else. So your Raspberry Pi 4 is powered by Android TV. Let's walk through some of the features. Apps from Google Play. Talk to Google Assistant. I haven't looked at that but I will have a look at that in a separate video and cast to your TV. I don't think Chromecast is supported actually in this. I'm sure when I ran through, when I read through Consta Kang's blog, uh, it said that casting wasn't supported. And here you can see it looks very different. Uh, we have more things on here. Uh, and if we go to apps, it shows us all the apps that are available. But if we want to add key things to the uh, desktop, then we can add things like the Google Play Store. We can add things like the YouTube app. And because I'm signed in, I can get any games that I've previously bought. Now the Files app seems to have disappeared. Yeah, I can't see the Files app on there now, but you can always add one back in. Uh, but I'll look, I'll look at that. This is more about the setup tutorial. Now if we go into Settings, we should find that it's not using the, all of the available space. So we go to Device Preferences and Storage. There you go. So total space is 5.3 gigabytes. So that's not using the full space. There is a way of doing it within this Android uh, by going to recovery, but I like to use Gparted. So I'm going to switch off and reboot into Raspberry Pi OS and I'm going to do it with Gparted. So device preferences, go down to the bottom. And in fact, before I do that, I'm going to go into Raspberry Pi settings and I'm going to play around with a few things. So 720 just gives better performance. You can use 1080 and the video works fine, um, but uh, certainly if you're gonna use it for games, 720 is definitely a lot better. Uh, and I'm also gonna uh, allow it to be overclocked. So maximum CPU frequency, two gigahertz. And I think that's all we need from that. So let's shut down. Okay, so I'm back in Raspberry Pi OS. So let's put my SD card into the Pi uh, that's running Android 11. And you can see that it changes things on here. So if we open up boot, let's just close these down. We've got config.txt. And if we scroll down through, we should find, there you go. So we've got overclocking settings here. Uh, oh, actually, so it's already there. Yeah, arm frequency 2000 over voltage. So it looks like you don't have to do anything else to overclock it. It looks like uh, just changing that in the menus has uh, enabled that, so that's great. And let's go to Gparted 
and again if you haven't got gparted uh, it's definitely worth having uh, I've got a separate video shows you how to install it and also talks you through gparted and why to have it so this is to expand the partition so what we're seeing here is the operating system that's running Raspberry Pi OS so we click on the drop down and we click on the other one uh, which is so this is the Android one you can see Android creates multiple partitions this is part of the reason it doesn't work with things like uh, pin OS and Barry boot although I think there was a version on pin OS that, that had been converted but uh, it normally doesn't work so right click on that and resize and then we're going to expand it so that Android can use the whole of the SD card click on the tick and apply and that's it hit close and we can shut this all down now and we can reboot with Android 11 in the slot okay so it's now booted up at 720 uh, if you're watching this on the TV you'll see that it looks a little bit softer uh, if I go to Ada 64 which I've just installed from the Play Store uh, you can see that system uh, so internal storage total space 27.38 gig free space 25.41 so that's worked if I go down, uh, you can see CPU, it's got uh, 2 gigahertz at the top there. So everything seems to be working. Now Android TV has slightly less compatibility than other versions of Android, and that's because it tries to show you apps and games that are only designed for the TV. So they're designed to use either a remote control or a controller. Uh, but the experience of using it on a TV is much better than using uh, a normal version that you're supposed to use mouse and keyboard with or touch with. I really like it. I use it on a Sony TV and I've got it on an Nvidia Shield. Uh, I've installed a browser, so the Puffin TV browser is a good one to use. And you can see there, uh, it looks like any other browser. Uh, if I click on Raspberry Pi 4 and go back to this, if, something, if you find something's not working, always check the blog. Uh, so if we go to here, Lineage OS Android TV, there's loads of information on here. And I often get asked questions that are included in this. So have a look at this first. If you really can't get something to work, ask the question in the comments and I'll try and answer it or maybe someone else has the answer. But uh, loads of things are working. The performance does seem really good in this build. It looks great. There you go, there's an FAQ at the bottom there. Uh, all sorts of information and you can use this on USB have a look at my other Android 11 uh, video which shows you how to use it with USB devices rather than SD cards but it does work pretty well on an SD card and you'll see in here there's various different shortcut options uh, so we've got F1 home, F2 back, F3 multitasking, F4 menu, F5 power, F11 volume down and F12 volume up so thanks very much to Consta Kang for this excellent build and everybody else involved in it. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.